Honorable viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, to all our seekers of knowledge, seekers after the truth, and also to our YouTube and Facebook viewers, I greet you all with the greetings of peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, guidance, mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Welcome to Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, bringing the light of Islam to each and every one of you. We hope and pray, believe in viewers, brothers and sisters, that you are joining me this evening in the best of health and faith by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, first and foremost, we give praises and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, for blessing us with health and strength, for granting us the permission that we are here to offer you these reminders and encouragement, inshallah, and we ask that you try to inculcate these reminders in your life, try to act, try to act upon them, try to put them into practice, also by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we'll commence our program with our usual opening Quran recitation so as to gain the mercy, rahma, barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember our golden rules whenever the Quran is recited, let us listen to it attentively so that we may receive some mercy and some blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, we have provided the translation of what has been recited so that each and every one of you will have a brief understanding of what is being said, said by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So without further ado, let us go to our opening Quran recitation, insha'Allah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ar Rahman, Alam al Quran, Halak al Insan, Alam al Bayan, Al Shams al Qamar bi Husban, Wan Najm al Shajar is والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان صدق الله العظيم Surely Allah سبحانه وتعالى God Almighty has spoken the truth Welcome back to our program That was our opening Quranic recitation Alhamdulillah Beautiful words there from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Qur'an. Whatever blessings would have earned from that recitation there, believe in viewers, brothers and sisters, we beg and pray that it will be shared upon each and every one of you, all our brothers and sisters who may be affected with any difficulty, uh, any hardship in life, we beg and pray that the blessings earned will be shared upon each and every one of you by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our program this evening is coming your way with the kind compliments and the courtesy of NNS Algus Customs Brokerage Service, VNP Supermarket, Wolf Furniture Store, Dinar Trading, Dollar Empire Incorporated, Gafsons Industry, and also the Unlocking Genius. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, bless these brothers and sisters for taking the initiative to invest in this educational program. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them, bless their business, and may this be a means for them to enter into the Jannah and the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay tuned, believe in viewers, brothers and sisters, for more of Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. Our reminder of the day is next. What have you done for this day? What have you done, done? What have you done for this day? What have you done for this day? What have you done for the day your body is laid onto a bed of dirt, mud and clay? In a hole that is cold, dark and grey Six feet deep only to be locked away As your family gathers outside to pray They say their goodbyes and cry until they can no longer stay You hear their footsteps slowly fade Until you come to realise that you are now All alone in your grave the silence sinks in until you are suddenly faced By two angels who sit you up in your place Asking who is your Lord, who is your prophet and what is your faith? What will you say? What have you done for this day? When you take your last breath and now you're down in the grave Angels ask some questions, are you prepared for what you say? What have you done for this day? 
What have you done for this day? For the day the trumpet is blown and our bodies are raised Out of our graves and onto the plains Under the sun without any shade Barefoot and naked with nothing to cover our shame For the day we stand sweaty and scared From terrors of which no one is spared Terrors so frightening even a child is left grey-haired So what have you prepared? For the day a mother abandons her young A father will flee from his son And everyone will panic and run As though they are drunk But they are not drunk Rather the punishment of Allah is severe What have you done for this day? For the day the scales are brought and our works are weighed The books are dispersed and our deeds are displayed Every major, every minor, every action that was made And even if it was an atom it will be written on a page For the day all is revealed and all secrets are leaked Our lips will be sealed and our limbs will speak From our hands to our feet bearing witness of all we used to reap for the day the fire is exposed for all to see Causing all of mankind to drop to its knees Trembling and weak, begging God please If you just take us back we'd be of those who believe For the day paradise is brought near Towards the pious, towards the sincere For them is no sadness, for them is no fear For them is a life of everlasting happiness and cheer so will you be of those in Al Jannah or those in Al Sa'id? What have you done for this day? What have you done? What have you done for this day? What have you done for this day? On a day we take the sirat over the blaze and tread on a path thinner than a hair yet sharper than a blade. Will you be of those who fall? Or those who are saved. For the day an oppressor will bite on his hands, scream out and say, How I wish I had taken with the messenger away. How I wish I never took such a friend, for he led me astray. How I wish I was of those who obeyed. So, what have you done for this day? AKA the day of judgment, the day of regret. The day of resurrection, also known as the day of recompense. So if you hear these words, I urge you to stop and reflect. Take a moment to pause and repent. Make an intention to make some amends and ponder this question again and again until you reach the very end. What, what have, have you done, done for this day? this day? What have you done? What have you done for this day? Welcome back to our program, believing viewers, brothers and sisters. That was our rem uh, reminder of the day. Alhamdulillah, beautiful advice. Uh, Insha'Allah, Taala, let us try to inculcate these reminders in our lives, believing brothers and sisters. Let us try to act upon it. Let us try to put them into practice also by the permission of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Remember, you can continue to view our program right here on channel 69 at 8:30 p.m. every Monday evenings. You can um, subscribe to our channel on YouTube. You can like our page on Facebook as well. And also not to forget our WhatsApp group. Stay connected, believing brothers and sisters, through our WhatsApp group. You can subscribe to that group um, to telephone numbers 6226842. That is 6226842. And you can have your various reminders with regards to halal haram, with regards to moon sighting, alhamdulillah, and many other uh, very important information with regards to this beautiful deen of ours, insha'Allah. So subscribe to that group, believe in brothers and sisters, so we can be updated, uh, insha'Allah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed each and every one of us that we have completed the month of Rabi al-Thani, and now we are in the month of Jumada al-Ula. This is the fifth month of the Islamic year, alhamdulillah. And so as we are progressing, believing brothers and sisters, fastly coming up to the blessed month of Ramadan, it is approximately four months more for the blessed month of Ramadan. And so we should try to, um, you know, start making some preparations, inshallah, for this blessed month. Let us try to organize ourselves and try to understand what we want to achieve come this blessed month of Ramadan. Let us perhaps make a checklist so that um, we will know exactly what are, are our priorities come the blessed month of Ramadan. We will know what exactly we want to achieve by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we 
um, progress and we advance further coming up to this blessed month of Ramadan by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, believing brothers and sisters, I'd like to invite on our program this evening for our featured presentation. He is no other than Sheikh Safras Bakas. He is the Imam for Masjid al Abadin in Queens, New York. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we like to add, uh, encourage and uh, we would like to, Alhamdulillah, uh, ask Sheikh to address each and every one of us this evening on our program. Let's talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. It is time now for our featured presentation. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihadha wa ma kunna linahdadiya lawla an hadana Allah. Alim al-ghaybi wa al-shahada huwa al-rahman al-rahim. Ashan wa la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa sanadana habibuna Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Istafahu Allah azza wa jal wa ja'alahu khayru al-bariya. قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بُعِثُّ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمُ الْأَخْلَاقِ صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في قوله أما بعد Praises are due to Allah. We praise Allah and we glorify Him. We glorify Allah in a manner He deserved to be glorified and we praised Him in a manner He deserved to be praised. And we testify that there is no deity deserved to be worshipped but Allah. To him belongs the heavens and the earth. He, Allah, is the master of the day of judgment. He begets not nor is he begotten. And none is like Allah. And none is like him. We send salutations to our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with him. My beloved friends, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, Allah has blessed us to witness yet another day in the week, another blessed day in the week, and that is the day of Jum'ah. We pray that this day brings goodness our way, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend His barakah and His blessings upon us and our family members. Today, inshallah, in our discourse, in our discussion, we would like to speak about the various levels of social relationships or relations. But before we start to speak about that one of the things we want to emphasize on and to lay on the table so to speak is that we should live as Muslims with that awareness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has he created us and placed us on the face of this earth and alongside us there are others there are individuals that was created with us with variations, with differences. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create you alone, but rather He created individuals in, with numerous differences. Differences in terms of their color, differences in terms of their language and their background in terms of their ethnicity, in terms of their practices, in terms of their customs and practices. And as such, for us to have a meaningful life, we should be aware that our relationship with people around plays an important role. Previously, I've mentioned that in Islam there are in our teaching, there are three main relationships that Islam focuses on. Our relationship with ourselves, training ourselves, emphasizing on our own spiritual growth, our own spiritual development, 
and also our relationship with the Creator. Alaqatuna ma Allah Azza wa Jal. Your relationship with the Divine. Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Islam also emphasizes uh, on the relationship with others. And therefore, social relations is something that Islam speaks about and give guidelines about. And therefore, we should be aware of this. We should be aware how to deal with individuals, how to interact with them, and your awareness of how to interact with people based on their levels, based on their responsibilities, based on your connection with them, your ties with them. If you know that, how to do so, how to have a more healthy relationship with people that you interface with on a daily basis or interact with within the premise of your home, then your life would be one of happiness and joy. But if we live in isolation, not knowing how to interact with people and we will say things at any given time without knowing time, without knowing the place we are at, without knowing who we are talked to and how we have to adapt in situations that we may be in and sometimes remain silent in situations. So we want our brothers and our sisters to understand two things before I start to share the key aspect of today's presentation. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not only create created you, but rather He created for you families that you have to interact with and others. So be cognizant of that. And secondly, your life, the state of your life will be determined based on how you live with the people around you. And as such, one of the great contemporary scholar, he mentioned that there are four levels of social relations. Contemporary, and this was also take, taken from uh, many of uh, the senior scholars of spirituality, um, at, like Imam Ghazali and others, they highlighted uh, the levels of social relations. And one of the first thing that they have mentioned, which is the highest level of social relation, and this is the highest level in which a Muslim, you as a Muslim, you become a source of uh, essential nourishment for others. Your, your mere existence is one of nourishment towards your fellow Muslims. So your existence is a meaningful one. Your presence is one in which you provide nourishment to others. Spiritual nourishment to others. Example, like a Muslim scholar who calls people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we see individuals of that level who is a nourisher, not nourishment in sense of the food and the drink but spiritual nourishment inspiration for others their life becomes an inspiration for others their life becomes like a guide for others they will hold you by your hand and raise you up when you fall on your knees when you go wrong they would guide you they will direct you to the teachings of the Quran and the way of our Prophet Muhammad when you interact with such a person that you should show respect to a to such a person 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Al-Quran, Obey Allah and obey His Messenger and the people of authority and people of knowledge. Al-ulama warathatul anbiya The scholars are considered to be inheritors of the prophets. So they inherited the lofty responsibilities of the prophet. So when we are in the gathering of someone that Allah, you know, subhanAllah has placed in that rank, that we should understand how we conduct ourselves, what to say, what not to say, when to be silent, not to be rude. So as Muslims, we should aspire to be such a person. So that is when it comes to your relationship with that person, but also the highest level that we should always try to seek is that level where we as individuals work tediously. We should work very hard where we become a nourisher for others, always willing to guide others, nourish them spiritually, teach them, utilize their time wisely, guide them when they are going wrong. You're like a shepherd. When your flock is going out, you, you, you know, direct them back in to come in line. So we should strive and work hard to be that person. Be that beacon of light that everyone looks for for guidance. That lighten up the path of others. Lighten, lighten up the road for others to walk on. So remember that. And then you have the second level. And the second level is that person, that person is like a medicine. He's like a medicine that benefit in times of need. It's like that person that actually, you know, come and make sacrifices, come to your assistance and make sacrifices whenever they're called upon and whenever they they see that there is need and that they are individuals on in a very difficult situation in their lives they are always willing to take that step forward to provide that medicine right for that person your presence could be a medicine for someone your advice could be a medicine for someone your smile could be a medicine for someone. Your, your gentle approach can be a form of medi medication and medicine for others. So you should understand that in life, you will come in contact with individuals like that. And that while that is so, we should aspire to be such a person. That is always willing to help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Al Quran about those individuals that make so much sacrifices to do a'mal al saliha and that they will have a high level, subhanallah, a high level and maqam. In the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us in Al-Quran, وَلَا تَسْتَوِ الْحَسَنَ وَلَا السَّيِّيَةِ إِدْفَ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ فَيْذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَهُ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ أَعْدَاوَ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ Allah says, And not equal are the good deed and the bad deed. Are they the same? A good deed and a bad deed, can it be the same? No, it's not the same. So Allah is posing this question to us. You know, are they the same? Analyze and, and, and assess the good deeds and the bad deeds. Right? In many parts of the Quran, Allah posed the question to us, saying to us, is a good person and a wicked person, are they the same? Is a believer and a disbeliever the same? 
Allah is saying to us clearly and distinctly, you know, goodness and basically good deed and bad deed, you know, it's not the same. And therefore, we should repel every evil with, with something that is better. To that extent, if you have enmity with someone, when you interact with them, it will seemingly look as if, um, you know, you are a devoted friend. In other words, live in such a way with people that may consider you to be an enemy. Live in such a way of goodness and be an inspiration and as in inspire others to do good and, you know, repel every bad deed with a good deed. That when you when you have those qualities and those ways, what happens is that subhanallah Allah is saying, live in such a way with those qualities that when people look at you, even to with your enemies, they will think that you're good pals and friends. Devoted friends. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what he says. Right? And then the third level of social relations is similar to an inanimate object. The relationship that is described as a relationship that is similar to an inanimate object. You know, and that object, uh, inanimate object or an animal. And what happens is that whether, you know, that person is no benefit to others and it does not harm anyone. An inanimate object cannot benefit you or harm you in any way. There are animals out there that can benefit you, yes, but there are animals that, that only brings harm your way. Right? So, what is very clear from this is that a person similar to an inanimate object or animals do not harm nor bring any form of benefit. Such a person who has been withdrawn from society. So in life, you may find someone not contributing at all to your life. Always withdrawn. Always withdrawn, not taking the initiative to do anything. Whenever called upon, they choose not to participate. So, a withdrawn person can be very, you know, can be very ill. So, in life, when you see someone that is withdrawn, it, it is important for you to extend a helping hand. Right? That is from a, a psychological perspective. But in life itself, there are individuals from a spiritual side that they are individuals that is withdrawn from society in its whole. They do not participate in anything. They don't participate in community work. They don't participate in their own personal development, in their family development. They live day after day after day without any source of benefit or, or, or any worth to their life. It is as if their existence is of no benefit to them. And from a spiritual side, that we have to be very, very cautious that we not fall into that. Be that person that is proactive. Be reflective. Ponder. Reflect. Contemplate on your existence be that that person that is always willing to do something constructive on a daily basis do not allow your existence to be uh, subhanallah uh, do not allow your existence to be a you know a, you know a course for others or a worries for others do not allow your existence in this world to be a burden on someone else's shoulder or someone else's life. So, it's important to remember that. It is vital to remember that as we move forward. And the last point is that, you know, uh, the, the last level 
um, of um, so uh, our social our social um, our social relation is the individual that is like uh, a snake a poisonous snake or poisonous creature that is always uh, ready or always find that person uh, inflicting harm on others so in life we see individuals are like this that in your daily interaction you will come across people that they're they're subhanallah their primary focus is to harm others the primary focus is to instill harm on other people not to benefit people as Muslims we should be like the bee the Prophet وسلم, he says the believer should be like the bee you know the bee that brings uh, subhanallah brings forth honey the bee in its entirety has numerous benefits you know it brings forth uh, subhanallah that which is good that which cures sweet uh, on the tongue we don't have time to discuss this but just like how the bee is quite uh, subhanallah an amazing creature that bring benefits to many and, and it's a cure and it's a baraka and produce that which is good just like that you should be and in life when we come subhanallah come in contact with individuals that they mean and primary goal in life is to harm others that we should distance ourselves from such a person that we should not interact with such a person the only interaction if that you if you provide you know beneficial counsel for that individual or nasiha for that individual so in simple terms that we have to decide you have to decide which person you would like to be right what level you would like to be would you like to be in the level where you as an individual is actually um, a source um, of essential nourishment to others you aspire to be an inspiration for others where your life becomes a, a core example where people follow or you want to be that individual that always isolated not presenting anything to society not offering anything to society or you want to be that person that subhanallah that whenever called upon you are there to help where your presence is like a medication for others your dealings with others like brings calm and serene to others or you want to be that person that is always harmful to others as a believer the prophet muhammad وسلم, he says al muslimu man salim al muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi wal muhajiru man hajara ma naha allah an the muslim is someone a muslim is defined as someone man salim al muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadi where another muslim is safeguarded from your tongue they're not offended by the things that you say you do not hurt them with your hands, be lisanihi by your tongue and wayedi and your hand. You do not harm others. Another person feels safeguarded that you will not afflict any abuse or be violent with them physically. Right? That is subhanallah a statement of our Prophet Muhammad. And as we conclude, we want to mention three points. In life, as I said, that if we want to be happy, we have to look at our relationship with others and how we live with others. But there are certain signs of happiness and sa'ada. And the first sign of happiness and sa'ada is that that person that is happy is always enduring the harmful conduct of other Muslims, especially family members and relatives, and not complaining about them to anyone a person that is truly happy 
you know, would be patient. In life, when you're interacting with people like your family members and others, and they, they want to, you know, let harm befall you, that you will be patient, but you will endure those harmful things. So, in your social interactions, at times you have to endure ill treatment from others, like the Prophet did. Like the Prophet lived by that. People uh, harmed the Prophet in so many different ways verbally, physically. They harm people that the Prophet love, like his wife Khatija. But yet the Prophet Muhammad endured all those harmful things and, uh, and so in so many different ways, even to his family members like Abu Lahab, in still, uh, in, you know, harm the Prophet ridicule the Prophet but the Prophet was patient and he endured those things. And in our social interaction as well, we should remember to refrain from ill treating of other Muslims by not harming them and not responding to evil by e evil with evil. So in our, our interaction with others, we have to know how to respond. Respond appropriately. Respond, do not respond when a person inflicts harm on you or, uh, you know, wants evil to befall you, you do not respond in the same way. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Al-Quran, uh, Subhanallah, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌ حَمِيمٌ We shared that a couple minutes ago. That, you know, people that have enmity for you, you treat them in such a way that when people see you, they will think that you are close friends. Right? Your presence should be a healing for others and an inspiration for others. Your presence should be the reason, the presence in someone's life and your relationship in someone's life should be the reason for that person wanting to change the course of their lives and the choices that they are making by just looking at you. And then you have the third sign and that is to treat with moral excellence those who behave both badly and, and virtuously uh, with you. So, the Prophet said, My Lord taught me adab, refined my akhlaq, and he have done that well. And therefore, Let's look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي الصَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْقَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says, those who give in the cause of Allah in secrecy and openly, Allah praise them. And those who somehow suppress their anger, وَالْقَاذِمِينَ الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ and those who forgive others, those who forgive those who do them wrong. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who engage in acts of ihsan and goodness. And therefore, my brothers and sisters in Islam, on today's khutbah, our main focus is for our brothers and sisters to understand that in life we will come across many people with various ways and conduct and we should able to know how to assess them and we should know ourselves as well so that we may interact with them in a meaningful way. Not everyone is subhanallah is the same. Not everyone has the same temperament. Not everyone have the same knowledge. Not everyone have the same wisdom. Not everyone have the same level of Iman and faith. And therefore, we should deal with people based on where they are in life and try to help them as we assess ourselves and as we assess them as well. Insha'Allah. Uh, assessment does not mean judgment. Uh, let's 
uh, understand that. We do not judge others, but we try to understand others so that we will deal with them in a better way, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, guide us and protect us, and grant us goodness in this life and the afterlife. Ibadallah, inna Allah ya'murukum bil adli wa ihsan, wa ita'i dhil qurba, wa yanha nil fahshai wal munkar. Welcome back to our program, Believing Viewers, Brothers and Sisters. That was our featured presentation done by Sheikh Safraz Bakas, the Imam for Masjid al-Abadin in Queens, New York. Alhamdulillah, uh, we beg and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, will bless our dear and beloved Sheikh for taking the time off to um, give us those valuable information, Alhamdulillah, to address us, Alhamdulillah, and may this be a means for him to enter into the paradise and Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believing viewers, brothers and sisters, Continue to view our program right here on channel 69 at 8.30 p.m. You can like our page on Facebook. You can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Don't forget the WhatsApp group that, like I've mentioned before, subscribe to telephone number 622-6842 with regards to um, the various reminders. You can have your information concerning halal haram with regards to um, information concerning moon sighting and many other beautiful information with regards to this beautiful deen of ours by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So until next week Monday, may the peace, guidance and the mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يا ربي بجاه النبي أزح الغمة يا ربي شوف 50,000 dollars or more at any of Carrefour's seven locations countrywide and you will earn an entry into our Christmas promotion over 150 fabulous prizes to be won and these include tools hampers, power tools, pressure cookers, electric kettles and solar lights and three grand prizes an air conditioner unit, one complete solar system and a brand new motor car Drawings will take place on the 12th and 19th of December and our grand prize drawing on the 23rd of December. So make your holiday season special by shopping at Gaffoo's, the name you can trust. Conditions apply. See press for more details. Ah, hey everybody, it's me, Lolly, the one and only. Haha, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you today about phones. You see, I have a different type of phone. What is this? This is not a phone, this is a remote. So, put it up. Any type of phone you got, I just need to unlock. If the phone needs to unlock or anything in the phone needs to unlock, then you got to come to the unlocking genius. This one can unlock anything. Any phone, network lock, password lock, Google lock, Samsung lock, computer lock, iCloud lock. No people can do this unlocking, but this one will unlock all of the phone anytime, anyway, all the time. So, any type of phone for unlock, you call 6264772 or 6932204. Unlocking genius. So, remember, unlock any phone, unlock anything on the phone, you call the number and get your phone unlocked. What? The one thing we don't unlock is teeth and phone. Now you can really go shopping in Lenora at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road. Come in and enjoy great prices on the widest range of groceries, beverages, frozen meats and vegetables, and ice cream too, even food for your pets. Get detergents and bathroom soaps and cleaners, the full range and all the brands. Pots and pans for the kitchen, cutlery and crockery for dining. And all the household items you need to make homes so comfortable. The ladies will love our cosmetics collection, perfect for gifts for special occasions and just what you promised yourself. V&P Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road, West Coast, Demerara. Yeah. <laughs>
hasretin var Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Selam sana ey kutlu yar With a mission, faith and patience You convey the noble message Brought the light through your guidance Peace be upon you, my beloved Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad Ya Nabi, Salam Alaika Ya Rasul, Salam